guys and welcome back to another tutorial for M Creator. Uh, today what we're going to be covering is math, uh, some math operators and uh, components. So uh, there's not too many to cover so I can probably fit most of them in today. Uh, I, now for this one I'm not sure what all the different things are. These are usually um, like uh, cause, sin, and uh, tan are usually the ones that you can find on calculators, so they're more um, calculator-based operations, but uh, I can cover round up, round down, and some uh, uh, and round uh, variables as well. The rest, I'm not entirely sure what they're all, what they all do, but I'll be able to explain the, at least the rounding of what that block does. Uh, for the math operator, um, uh, most of them, uh, this stuff mostly I'll be able to cover. Uh, the rest is a little bit more advanced for me. And the uh, random number operator, I'll be able to cover at least the random part of things. Not so much the uh, rest of it either, so I'm not that skilled in math to explain that um, and as far as the number that's pretty straightforward and uh, this is uh, another operator that I'll be able to explain so uh, to begin with uh, let's go and uh, go to our math operator we can grab a number a basic number by adding it to uh, adding our zero component and then we can change the text to whatever we want to set the number for that uh, element. So if we want it to say be a, a value of 14, then we can set the value to 14. Um, some components already come uh, pre-equipped with numbers uh, x, y, and z's and a few other uh, extra blocks. Uh, so you might have uh, default values already uh, coded in. For example, uh, set time has a default value of 1. Uh, if we go to uh, the world tab and then we scroll down to play sound uh, now the default value for the level and sound are is equal to one as well so that's the default pitch usually on how loud you want it uh, you can set it to lower numbers or whatever you're going for uh, now what you can also do with set time or other variables uh, like numbers and stuff like that is you can add a math based operation and you can basically um, go and you can get the particular time or something like that and then you can increase it uh, rather than just setting it. So this would basically set it. Uh, this would basically increase it if we knew what time it was. So if we go back to world data, uh, we can get the current time and then we can increase it by one. So that would work uh, if we wanted to increase it by an entire hour, we could set it to a thousand. And um, that's basically how we can basically manipulate the time. Uh, now, your basic operators, uh, these values right here are pretty simple to uh, understand. Uh, plus basically uh, adds things, the subtraction sign basically subtracts things, multiplication and division. So we can basically manipulate the time as we want with those four um, variable or four operations right there. Uh, I'm not sure what that does or any of the other ones. So with that being said, uh, that's great. Um, now by default, numbers will always not be rounded. So what we could actually do uh, to make sure that it was the exact time is we could round the, the time. Now generally getting away with uh, just setting the, uh, the number in the round number part and then uh, having it so it's just set to round. Um, this will always determine if it's near the nearest number uh, and round up or down depending on uh, what number it's closer to. Uh, if you wanted it to specifically round up, then you can set round up. If you want it to specifically round down, then you can round it down. Uh, the, the round part will always uh, basically go to the nearest number. So if it's, um, say, 6, then it's always going to round it to, or pardon me, 
if it's 0 0.6, then it's always going to round it to the nearest number. Um, so it would be 1. Uh, if it's like 0 0.3, then it's going to round it to 0. Um, I think 5 is generally, if I remember way back uh, when I was learning this stuff, it was 5 is generally around the number where it will switch to the other direction. I can't remember if that's the... Um, goes up or down depending if it's on 5, but that's generally what it is. Um, and the random number part, uh, this is basically allows us to um, generate a number between uh, one, 0 and 1. So if you wanted to make a timer or something like that, uh, we'll just get rid of those. So we could make something that tests for or sets a variable to say a, a number we can add a local variable up here and we can set the local variable name to something like random uh, this will only be running once for this particular procedure we'll need a number because it's a number uh, that we're working with and then we can add a local variable and we can set this to random and now the number will generate between zero and um, one. So anything be between that, those numbers it will be generating. So what we can do with that further is go to um, our logic operators. We can grab this and then we can set this equal to or greater than. And then we can basically use our variable, our number variable. And then we can test if it is equal to or greater than say 0 0.75. If it's equal or greater than that, then do something. If it's um, say we want to add a little bit less, so right there it's a 25% chance. If we want it to be um, say a 50% chance, uh, if it's lower then what we can do is we can use the remainder of the number, we can set this to 25 and that will be a 25% chance between 75 and the 25. So there's 50% uh, between those two numbers. So, and then there's a remainder of 25 that won't be accounted for unless we define it to be accounted for. So if we wanted to define it, what we could do is we could do an else statement or we can detect uh, directly if it's less than 25. So if less than 25% do something. Now, one thing to note with your random numbers is you don't want to go anything over one and you don't want to go anywhere below zero. So those numbers have to be somewhere between um, what your random number is generating. So you can use up to, I believe, three digits. So you can go 0, 0, 1, and that would be valid. And um, 0, 1, 5 would also be valid, and so on. So uh, for example, if we wanted to calculate, say, five elements, uh, what we could do is we could add um, a few other extra variables. Now, you might need a calculator for this, but uh, Windows does have a built-in calculator. So if you wanted to de detect on how many, um, say you have five things that you need to be done, and you want it to be between um, basically uh, separated evenly, what you can do is you can go one divided by five, and then our two is obviously what we're going to need. So we need to multiply that by, uh, so well, we wouldn't multiply it, but we would subtract it from 1, and that would give us 0 0.8. So 0 0.8, and then what we would do is we'll, we're testing if it's equal to or greater than 0 0.8. Next, what we would test for is 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.4, and this would need to also be equal to or greater than. And 0 0.2 uh, would be the final one. And then our else statement would be anything um, that our random number doesn't equal to. Which also basically um, counts anything under 0 0.2. 
So that's basically how you can quickly set it up. If you need to figure it out, um, then you can just uh, say if it's a, it's a more complex number, or something like uh, five or something like that, or one divided by say nine. Um, okay, that didn't work out. <laughs> uh, one or is divide, divided by nine, and we'll get this number here. So we would want to take the following three numbers here. Uh, we can copy this clear it and then we can go one minus and then uh, we can I think paste control V does that and we can hit equals and then that will be our number that we need and then we can actually hit equals again and it will give us the next number we need and so on until we get to the last uh, version and then we would just use an else statement for that um, other than that uh, the last thing that we need to cover is uh, not too complicated that's why I covered those parts first uh, if you have a text uh, based um, procedure so for example if you have uh, let's create a variable quickly um, we need a string variable and then we will create a text so number number text or we could just say number number is fine if I can spell it properly all right so if we have uh, say a variable that is set to um, zero we should be able to put that on if we have the right um, operation so we need to format number and then we can add a number here so we can add like so and then what we can do is we can go one zero uh one zero zero or something like that we'll go maybe 255 because that's how long how tall the number is so what we could do is rather than um have it do with a point form we could also do it with just the single solid number and that's just using the two pound signs like so. Uh, now our number is basically um, uh, stored to our local variable. So if we wanted to get, say, um, a number for our, our number variable, uh, what we can do is we can basically use the math base, get num number from text, and then we can basically grab our local variable and we can uh, for our number uh, for a text version and then we can basically get the number that we have here. So that would work as well. Um, what this is doing is it's passing it from a string that we previously stored it to. This could be, if it was a global variable or an MVT variable, then you could basically store it and then call it into your procedure. Um, and then basically decode it into a number version. Uh, this format should work. I'm not sure if it would or not, but um, it's just an example of setting a number to a string. Um, now, this would definitely work though, if you were to wanting to get a number from the, the text itself, and then you could just call the text number, and then you could basically convert it into something the number version can read. So hopefully you guys uh, know a little bit more about all the math operators. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.